Hey guys, we're back with the podcast portion of the evening. Tom, Brian, and Dan. So tonight we're going to talk about the standard metagame and how war like really just messed everything up. Because the format is completely different than it was right even before war came out. You know, this is like one of the craziest powerful sets that they've come out with in a very long time. Cards like Narset, Teferi, just destroying modern legacy and standard. You know, oh, got to come back yeah, in. I'm go. crawling out. We got a little bit cramped here tonight, fellas. How, Get a little uh, comfortable. <laughs> how many sets do we have in standard right now? We have... Go ahead, Dan. Uh, you have... Let's see. It starts with Ixalan. Ixalan, Rivals. M19. M19, Dominaria. Uh, and then, then the guilds. three... Yeah. And then it goes to three Ravnica sets. So eight? Seven. Seven? Yeah, seven. Seven? So when's the last time when we were at the end of a standard format? You know, because you know, there's been some that have been as big as nine, correct? Right. Yeah. And, uh, so we're at the end of a standard format, and you have a new set coming in. What kind of impact does that usually have? How do you mean? Like, how does it change the format? Think about when, like, cons was around, and the later sets of cons came in. It didn't drastically warp them once you had the mana bases. Like, the new cards, okay. you had so many powerful cards, like Siege Rhino, and Tassiger and Collected Company that, like, you know, generally the last couple of sets are not going to do a whole lot. Whereas okay. War of the Spark, I'm agreeing with you, War of the Spark really changed the landscape of the format completely. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Like, think about it. So what would you say are, like, what's Tier 1? What are the top four decks in Standard? Well, the best deck right now is Mono Red. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be just because at the beginning of every new format, it seems like Mono Red's just the best deck because it's A, it's the easiest deck to play correctly. B, it's always just like very consistent, right? And people are still like experimenting with these really crazy mana base and all these high cost cards. So Mono Red players just want to prey on that, right? And with the addition of Chandra and then Tybalt out of the board, they got a lot of very powerful tools also. So I think right now the best deck is Mono Red. Um, let me, Three let me, weeks from now, it's not going to be. Let me throw a couple things about Monorod out there. Number one, it's not playing Risk Factor, which is crazy. That card is pretty powerful, and it has just better options. It doesn't even need to play Right, it. that's what I'm saying. It's just faster than that. And the second thing is you said that Monorod um, is the easiest deck to play. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that Monorod, especially in a mirror, is incredibly complex. And there's a lot of choices that you have to make to navigate to a winning position. Because, like, at some point, you want to be actually the control player. No, and I get what you mean. Like, e easy. I meant easiest to play as in it, it's got it's, – it's not going to change too much, it's right? It's game ones are the easiest it's to play. For a, sure. it's game ones are the easiest to play, and B, like, you, you have the 70 out of the 75 built. Yeah. You, you're going to make a couple of changes with new additions, but it's all already there, and it's all super powerful, right? Yeah. So that's why I think at the moment Mono Red's the best deck – I think as the format develops, we're really just going to see Esper just completely take over. I think Esper, with the tools it has, it's going to be like a hybrid build of the walkers and control deck. You know, it's going to be like 12 planes walkers, 13, not necessarily some of these crazy like 19, 20 builds that we're seeing. And it's just going to play like all the most powerful cards in standard. Hey, Frontmaster Eric Frumpkin, what's good, son? Trump, what do you think is the best deck in standard? He said Broken Planeswalkers, mid-range deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mid-range okay. dot deck. I mean, those Planeswalker decks are typically mid-range decks. Narset is the most broken Planeswalker ever. Yeah. Honestly? Don't disagree. She might be. She's she's incredible. She's so powerful. And the thing is, man, I started with two in my in the current iteration I have, which is Azorius, but by Friday it's going to be Esper. Spoilers, guys, I'm coming and, with it. And it'll be four. And, and it, it's four now. It went up to three, and I'm like, geez, every time I play her, I just want to find another Narset. Yep. And, and she's so good. What do you think, Horgan? What's yeah, the best deck in standard? Infect is the best uh, deck? Oof. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ashiok is really, pretty good. I really like Ashiok the power is sweet. level of the Dreadhorde decks. Yeah, I agree um, with and that. And if they play a card like the Wanderer, and then they play Dreadhorde, and it doesn't get answered, they just have to bring everything back. I, I think that, like, you're going to be on a build where it's not four colors, I think that, like, the three-color Esper Dread Horde deck is probably just going to be where we land. You know, you're going to play, like, you some copies. You, you really don't, though. Like, you're not, I don't think you have to be all in on that. I, I think you're going to play, like, 
maybe a couple copies of the Wanderer, a couple copies of Command the Dread Horde, and then just like an Esper Walker's control build otherwise. And it's just going to be all the best colors while having a con more consistent mana base. Let me ask a silly question. So you said you know, Narset might be the best Planeswalker in Standard. And we know that spot, you know, they're battling between Narset and Teferi, right? And that's pretty clear yeah. as far as what the best Planeswalker is. Certainly not Bolus. No. Right? That three drop slot is so important. So how do you feel about Baby Brasco? Could she see a resurgence? Because she provides more card advantage than either of them over long term. Right, and she her minus is just abrupt decay, which immediately answers those. Gold so I, I think that I saw this Golgari Walkers build that it was you remember the Karn troll deck you used to play green black Karns? The explore package. Right. It yeah. was a similar deck, but it didn't even like go on as much of a an explore package. It was just like straight green black control. Okay. And it was, you play all the best Planeswalkers, you're like a green-black Planeswalkers deck, you know, you're just doing that. So I think that would be like a really solid answer to these type of decks, because Big Vraska is really good into those type of decks. So is Little Vraska, as you're just saying. I, I think the Walker decks usually... said boy. You know, the, the Walker decks are always going to be more powerful if you have access to black because of the alt stuff. Well, yeah. And there's so many Walkers that still have alts. Like, they were pretty good and cautious about not giving some of these really powerful walkers, any sort of alt. Yeah. It's so it's so much better that they have, other than maybe Teferi's. His well, passive is crazy. That green-black <laughs> deck would really love to play, like, some Elder Spells. You, you could right? just instantly yeah. get them with a Vraska, yep. a big Vraska. Or a little. A little or Vraska, little too. Yeah, yeah you just deal one What damage. other green-black You can play all three alt. Vraskas, technically. What about Lily? You want yes. Lily in there? Oh, of course. Yeah. You have just so many good walkers. You can play all the Vivians. The, the, the three, talk least, about three mana walkers. There's that three mana Vivian who's already seen playing Legacy, dude. Yeah, give everything okay. flash. Yeah, okay. give everything flash. So you just play like the best creatures, okay. you know? I think, I think there's an undiscovered deck that is aggressive with life gain. And I know that doesn't really sound normally that powerful, but, you know, if you think about the old, remember Abzan Aggro from the Khans era? Played like Warden of the First Tree. Yeah. You know, Seed Rhino. Seed Rhino. So it was very aggressive. It, it could kill people out of nowhere. It played Soren, the old Soren. Yeah. But at the same time, it gave you a ton of protection against any sort of aggro yeah. strategy. You know? Right. Like, it was like, I think there's something like that out here. I think there's something like that with Soren. I was going to say, Soren seems like probably the most unexplored card in the new set. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of applications for him because he's really good at controlling the opposing walkers, especially these ones that only tick down. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If you're going against Narset, he's really good. You know, he hits her once, and now she's going to die and kill herself. Yeah. Soren plus a Johnny seems really good. Yeah. Because you get to pump your team, they get Vigilance, and yeah. they get Life Link from Soren. Yeah. So what about Abzan walkers? Is that just, like, the way to do no, it like, so we take Abzan the screen? Abzan mid-range, you don't play a ton of walkers. Yeah, how do you, you're playing, how like, do you, Soren you need to make the aggro play. You, you okay. Like, you're, you're on aggro, but you're playing Soren and Johnny. Okay, so yeah. you're playing like Knight of Autumns then, and you could play, you could play an like explore a package. You could honestly just play the explore package and, and Knight of Autumn, Crow Har Harpooner. Yeah. And then nope. you all like it's basically the Dreadhorde deck. Then you yeah. get like Old Johnny too, the yeah. Tyrant. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. get you to reanimate play, some you stuff. You can literally play the Dreadhorde deck, but like remove all the extra stuff. Yeah. Okay. Like remove the Teferis, Remove like you just play the explore package, Dreadhorde, a Johnny. And um, sorry, I'd like to talk about the Dreadhorde deck for a minute. Okay. Like how? I, so that deck took me by complete surprise. I thought the format had started to solve into like you know control was out. The control decks are now mid range Walker decks. You've still got these aggro players, and then you've got other people just trying to do goofy stuff, right? Nexus is gone, and then this Dreadhorde deck came out of nowhere, and I don't really know where it's placed in the metagame and what it's good against because it has the explore package. So it like tries to be good against aggro, right? And then it also has all this huge top end that they're trying to ramp into. Right. So the thing <laughs> that I really like about the deck is that because it plays like half creatures, half walkers, and then like it has a combo finish, it's doing a little bit of everything, right? Yep. So you can apply pressure to opposing planeswalkers like we with all these little creatures, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you have walkers to keep you going, and then you just have like this huge late game command the dread horde that's just gonna win the game. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like in standard right now, if you're not either super aggressive or on some plan that just not combos them, but at least wins out of nowhere. If you think about an Elder Spell out of Esper, uh, Sarkin out of Jeskai, Command the Dreadhorde out of this, you know, you have to have some just 
because nobody's playing counter spells. Right. To fairy three, shut all that down. So you know you can play whatever you want at six or eight mana. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. <clears throat> so what I on this, I want to go a little more aggressive here. So I think that a deck that fell out of popularity that would probably be really good right now is something like Boros uh, Heroic Inter. What's that card? Heroic Reinforcements. Reinforcements yeah. Something like that. You know, a Danto yeah. Vanguards. That's it. That card we, seems uh, very well placed right now. We were talking about that on Friday, actually, on the stream. Yeah, were you? Because the, they were talking about like, well, or no, it was with you. I was talking about it with you, right? When we were looking at this. Mono red for oh, yeah. the win. Go away. Yeah, can we? Let's pull <laughs> this up. So we were looking at this, and I was saying, why is everyone on Azorius Aggro, and why is there like, why is Mono White Aggro better than Azorius Aggro right now? And everyone's like, well, it's just more consistent. And I'm like, well, why not play the red-white aggro version where you're playing the mono-white deck, but then you're just playing four heroic reinforcements? Right. Yep. Because then you're just going to blow out people really quickly if the same way mono-white does, but with yeah. more power. And that card gets a lot better in a format where there's no counter spells. Look how, look how bad Saltai Dreadhorde is. That's pretty interesting to me. We yeah. Just talking about that deck. 4C Dreadhorde is significantly better, but even not that great. I bet you that deck is extremely challenging to pilot. Like, I've tried it a little bit. I was trying a Saltai version. Uh, shout out to Jerry <laughs> Thompson. Yeah, he, I was trying a Sultai version. No, you suck it. And it was, you know, it was horrible. There were so many poor decisions that I made over the course of the game, just not being familiar with it, because I right. only played like a couple of them. That it's no surprise to me that Four C Dreadhorde and Sultai Dreadhorde are not that great. <clears throat> right. Um, I'm surprised I don't see any of that mono black um, deck in here. The mono black. It's like. Oh, what's the card called? Dreadhorde Invasion. Because that deck's been showing up, popping up everywhere that I've been seeing. I haven't seen hey, it we'll either. talk about Modern Horizons in the next topic, by the way. So yeah. bring that up again if the chat gets long. Because that's the next topic. Just so wanted to make sure top, she knew. Here's your top four. Roll Midrange. Is it Phoenix? Just Guys Super Friends and Mono White Aggro. According so, to, what, the last two weeks, Dan? Uh, yeah, this is from last or from Friday... This also includes um, data from... Friday the 17th. This so, also uh, includes information from the Arena MCQ that happened over the weekend. Okay. And that MCQ, um, they got like, I don't know, close to 400 matches recorded on here. So a significant portion of this is the online metagame, not just paper. Not just what we're seeing at the open. So let me say, <laughs> of the four decks that you brought up, I think that my, my contender for like... The best might be Gruel Midrange. I've played against that deck a lot, and it just feels like it it goes really, really aggressive. It draws a ton of cards. <coughs> it has a high end. It literally does everything. There's a ton of power in it. Like it, it just feels like it's so good. What does an aggro consist of in Azorius aggro? It's it's mono white aggro, but it splashes blue cards out of the they, board. Yeah, they don't play any main board. Yeah, uh, they play deputy of detention out of the board. They play negates uh, no, disdainful Dovin's stroke. Veto. Yeah, Dovin's veto. veto. Now it's Dovin's veto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So I've seen them play like Stroke or sometimes Spell Pierce. Right. Spell Pierce is a good one. Spell Pierce, my vote for like the best common in standard right now. Just to get you. Just I think Just because <laughs> well everybody's what is everyone doing? They're playing a whole bunch of really expensive cards. I'll I'll one up you. I believe that uh, Duress is almost as good. Almost and, yeah. And Duress usually has you know a shelf life of just the sideboard, almost all the time. Yeah, it's Duress is in main decks a lot now. Yeah, it's crazy. No, I, and I, let's talk about Duress for a minute. I think okay. that there is a black-white deck out there somewhere that's just, like, hand disruption and board control. Like, Well, if you look at the top four, none of them are playing Duress. None of them are even in black. Okay. That's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. Um, every what, single one of them is in red. What about Orzhov midrange? Do you think that could be a thing? No. I think... I think Mid range right now will prey on the aggro decks fine, but they'll still sometimes sneak it in there and beat you, and lose to all these. Yeah, but you could just play like four duresses and some Darials, just a whole bunch of like it, stuff that's good. And it doesn't matter because once the duress engine gets like on online, when they start drawing a lot of cards, you're you don't care about. Yeah, this. you're. Right, you want to be beating right. them down, or else they're just going to get advantage. It doesn't matter. What about black white? Uh, Even black white abortal sun. That's something I'd be interested in. Well, here, how about this? Black, white, what's that card? A Johnny's Pride Mate. 
Could you do a life gain? Dies to removal. Cards are bad. Dies to removal. Cards are bad. Clearly. No. Nope. Nope. You it's heard not, it here no. first, Twitch <laughs> chat. I'm dies gonna, to removal. I'm gonna change that vernacular. We're gonna just start calling it bounces to the fairy because that's, that's just true. as bad. You know what? That's the check in this format. Is Thief it of good against the fairy? Is no longer good in standard. Nope. But Legion War Boss all star. Is a house. Yep. It's crazy how that works, and that's one of the reasons why Jess guys. So you know what? Play. I was watching. Um, I can't remember who it was talk who it was talking about it. Jim Davis, he was saying that his pick for like the most underplayed card right now is Thorn Lieutenant, because anytime it gets targeted by a Teferi bounce, it makes yeah. the one one that just kills the Teferi. It's awesome against mono red as well. And he said that was the other argument yeah. he made was it's great against mono red. Yeah. So he said that that's his vote for like the most underplayed card right now. That's interesting. Yeah. I could see you know the problem is there's not a lot of green decks that are. No. It, 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 it could be in that Grohl aggro deck. Sure, Grohl midrange. Well, you could also just... I think it's a fine creature to play in something that you want to go big with because it does go big. You know what I mean? It, it scales very well into the late game. You know, speaking of something that scales very well in the late game, what are your thoughts on Karn, the great creator? Talk to me a little bit about it. So this is going to... Before we get there, I wanted to talk briefly about the Modern Horizons thing. Okay, because they were bringing it up in chat, and that's something they wanted to talk about. The spoilers? Yeah. Right. Let's do that for like five, six minutes. But after that, we're going to brew up this mono brown deck we were talking about. Gross. Sound good? All right. So, Dan, I want to go to you first. What is your mo card that you're most excited for, want to play, favorite, doesn't matter, out of Modern Horizons? What do you got for us? Uh, give me one second. He's going to pull up the spoilers. Uh, so, you know, if, while you're pulling that up, then Dan, uh, Bryant, what is yours? Like, what that is, guy right there. Which one? No, he's a two-drop green-red planeswalker. Green, oh, yeah, oh, right yeah. I don't know what, I don't know his name. Someone in something else. <laughs> something in the six. Yeah. yeah. How about them new well, swords, though? Ren yeah, in six. Yeah. Karn is unfun in modern. Yeah, he is. Is <laughs> Ren an Eldrazi? Did you guys see the one CMC angel? Yeah, that guy's cool. For one, one flying vigilance for one. Is that Brad Pitt? Go back up. This is my favorite card. Ranger of Eos? Uh, no, Ranger, Ranger Captain. Captain. Okay, Eos. let me read them. He upgraded. Search for... Convert a mana cost one or less. Ranger... Dang, that's really good. Yeah, I like scale up a lot because it's just going to be an auto-include as a four of. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, in fact... Yeah, that's like it's like a better become immense. Yeah. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like Force of Negation. Wait, go down. Force go down. Go down. What's the name of that? No, up. What's the name of that black card up on the right there? Umazella's Charm. Yeah. Yeah. That card's fine. Yeah. So my favorite card out of this set, Yogmoth. by far, Yogmoth. Not because he's very good. I think he's awesome. I, I like the ability to like repeatedly proliferate. I, I think that you could possibly find a way to abuse that. But like the very fact that Yogmoth yeah. finally has a card, I know, I know dope. Urza, too. That's my second most excited card. Uh, that's my card. I like the uh, new Horizon Canopy Lands. Uh, the Fiery I I I I Fiery Islet. Looks awesome. Um, the Sunken Sunbaked Canopy. Like, those are going to be auto-includes as, like, two or four ofs in, like, Mono Red. Oh, yeah. So, oh, I can make red, or I can draw a card in Mono yeah. Red. This Hello. is great. Yeah, Kitty, that's exactly correct. This set is absolutely insane. Um, yeah. What's the best Snow Matters card? The uh, best Snow Matters. I don't know, but they're getting this future site, and I didn't see that yet. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. What is the best Snow Matters card? Definitely the one drop two, too. Oh, no. No, no it's not. <laughs> it's a good one. The Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. It's like an Academy Ruins for Enchantments. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> what else do we got? Eladomri's Call. That one's really sweet. Yeah. All gonna, the you, swords. You mentioned the swords. Like, the swords are good, but they're not, they're not great. See play no. in, they're going to see play in Commander, no doubt. So, Urza sure. is one of the best cards in the set, yeah. for sure. Hey, go to that triple blue charm. So, Bryant, remember this? Yes. So, like, two I weeks ago. Card, yeah, me too. We actually brewed up, like, the same card. We were like, what would a mono blue charm look like? And we said, counter target spell, draw one card. Yeah. And then it was something else, not the last one. But I saw it. I was like, "That's weird." We brewed this card up. The last one was a bounce. Yeah, yeah. It was a bounce creature. Can't wait to draft the set. Same. Yeah. For people that wouldn't know, 
Why is Yogmoth good? So Yogmoth, can we pull him? Can you go to him real quick, Dan, so I can read his text exactly? So he's got protection from humans, which is pretty sweet. You know, the humans is an archetype, right? Pay one life, sack another creature, put a minus one, minus one counter on it, up to one target creature and draw a card. So, like, the first thing that I thought of when I saw that was something with lingering souls. You know, you just make a whole bunch of dorks or, like, Soren tokens, stuff like that. You're just going to turn them into cards and putting counters on stuff and then pay two black, discard a card to proliferate. Being able to, like, repeatedly turn bad cards, lands, etc., removal and bad As matchups. You draw all those cards. Right, into, like, proliferating. He's a draw engine and a filter engine at the same time. Exactly. He's crazy. He, he's, he does a lot. Um, yes, he's four mana, which is a lot for modern, but I think what they're really trying to accomplish in this set is slow it down. So, allied pro- talismans, yeah, that stuff's sweet, too. The problem is they're not going to be able to slow down modern with a card like this. No. Right? Yeah. They need stop gaps that are... No, much I think, less CMC. No, I, well, I, I agree with you, but what I'm saying is there's a bunch of cards in this set that they're using to do that, so I think that Yawgmoth might be able to find a home. So a Does that make sense to you? What are the turn three decks in modern right now? Dredge, Phoenix. Dredge, Phoenix, and Stormfield. And Tron. 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 Yeah, Tron. Is, they shut you down turn three, right? Um, so they stopped one of those. They gave us Fluster Storm. So they're stopping Storm, so they're cutting out one turn three deck. Aristocrat stack, yeah, true. Yeah, this is like the best stack outlet we've ever gotten. So, is there any way in modern to make infinite creatures? What's yes. the easiest uh, yes. way to do that? Uh, well, I have a really jank. No, what's the it. easiest way? What's the most effective way? <laughs> Twitch infinite, chat. If you're in infinite modern. creatures in modern, go. Infinite creatures in modern? <laughs> make, like, actually infinite, yeah. or... Did someone say infect? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I could show you... So, you know the... Um, can you do it with two cards in modern? What no. al- what altar did we just get in Horizon? There is a two card combo in modern. I'm pretty sure that makes infinite dudes. I know. Is it true to alarm in modern? I can't remember. There's the Thopter, no, it's not. The Thopter Factory. Yeah, that's and not infinite though. And a, so you know that's sw- Thopter, that fits Thopter right Thopter in there. Factory is actually involved in the combo. That there's a way to make it infinite. To Urza make, plus Thopter make... Sword goes infinite life, mana, and Thopters. That's crazy. You know, so the, just have you seen the two? Urza? Wait, yeah. no, it does not go infinite. It it only it has a restraint of how much mana you can pay for it. No, but Erna, Urza makes mana with the Thapters. New Urza? Yeah, the new Urza. The only Urza. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what where? Urza do you know about? I want to play that set. Well, no. Cap of Pride in the where, chat. Give it to is, me. Where is Urza? <laughs> Urza's probably all the way Yeah, up at the top, bro. He's not going to be at the bottom. Who are you joking? Well, no, well, he, was spo- the he was spoiled recently. Oh. Like in the last two days. It got really quiet. That was weird. We're all just like waiting no, for him. It was <laughs> the Thopter and the sword make a mana. That's what I'm saying. Um, <coughs> so you net a mana every iteration. Correct. Unstable. That doesn't count. That's not a real card. Oh, it is technically a real card. <laughs> Lord Urza. Let me read this to you, Twitch chat. Urza, Lord okay. High Artificer. Two and two blue. Legendary creature, human artificer. When Urza enters the battlefield, create a zero zero Karn struct, the thing that Karn makes, equal to the number of power and toughness, equal to the number of artifacts you control. Um, tab an untapped artifact, yes. add a blue. Pay five, shuffle your library, and then re- exile the top card until end of turn you can cast it. So before Urza was printed, we came up with a combo that made did the same thing, but it involved way more cards. Okay. So it's Pitiless Plunderer. Which is whenever a creature you control dies, create a colorless doctor. Okay. Or create a uh, treasure. A treasure, right? So you play that with Wind Grattle Scarecrow, which has persist, and it's an artifact, so you can sack it to Thopter Foundry. Right. And you play Solemnity, so it never comes back with a net counter on it, and you just keep making. Thopters. That sounds terrible. Right, but it does the same thing as this. Urza is it the Frexine Altar to yeah, that's true. I like yeah. that comparison. All right. So. I think we've talked enough on Modern Horizons for a minute. This is the standard podcast. Yeah. Um, let's get back to it. So, for a long time, you and I have been brewing like these kind of off kilter uh, artifact builds, right? We started with Mono Black with Phyrexian, or not Phyrexian, with Phylactery Lich. Um, and it evolved over time into a bunch of dual color builds that weren't very good. Um, and now, with the new Karn in the standard, we're looking to see if we can brew a Mono Brown version. Karn and Ugin. Ugin is a key yes. component to yes. this because if you can somehow effectively ramp into him, 
I think that he has the ability to just end the game. So He's like an Elspeth. Worn Power Stone is a card that I keep looking at. Worn Power Stone. Power Stone Shard. The one that you make a mana for each card and play named Worn Power Stone Shard. Yep. So that right there just screams to me like a card we should be playing if we're going, trying to ramp. So For could, colorless, at least. Could you play... Am I allowed to leave the room? Yeah, go ahead, man. <laughs> no, you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, so those of you who didn't know, he, he's just literally chilling with us. <laughs> so, talk to me about the ability to use some of the things like mana-producing, color-producing artifacts to be able to splash. So, I want to splash blue. So does it, would it help to play anything like you know, the mana geode, the chromatic lantern, any of that stuff? You don't need the geode, necess the lantern necessarily, because you really just need like to touch one color. So okay. basically, you just put the white and play Teferi. I was going to say, basically what this is, is like Aliantrazi's deck minus green Nessa. What was his deck? Mono green Tron in standard. I mean, no... His deck had was had a ramp component. Right, right, but I'm saying it's that deck minus the Nissa. You take okay, the Nissa out sure. and replace it with a different sure. color yeah. and a different card, right? Yeah. It's a little bit more aggro in the sense that you have Psy. Yeah. But yeah. you have to get Psy to stick. Yeah. You know, or else you're re really relying on Karn and Ugi to do a lot of heavy lifting. And they're real slow. They can be. What if you play slow. both cards? Oh, I would. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course. You yeah, wouldn't only play one. So are there what any? is the best mechanic in standard right now? Draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> the best mechanic. Mechanic. The most powerful mechanic. Is a planeswalker static considered a mm -mm. mechanic? Proliferate yeah. then, because it fuels the planeswalker yeah. mechanic. <laughs> um, I, I'd say proliferate. Yeah, it's planeswalkers, honestly. Proliferate hasn't been figured out quite yet, but I it's agree definitely got to be the. It's the most. Busted. It's the most powerful mechanic, and the fact that once someone figures it out. It's going to be almost unstoppable. Yeah, for sure. Jumpstart is pretty good. Jumpstart is very good. Um, I think there's been a huge rise in Phoenix decks. How has, how has Phoenix done the last few few weeks? Uh, it has 206 games, and it has a 55.3% win rate. That's pretty uh, big. Plus or minus 6 points. That's pretty solid, actually. Yeah. And that deck, you know, once it gets going, you just filter through so much stuff. I really like any decks that play blue or black right now playing Ashiok in the side. Ashiok's yeah. super. I cool. ran into that over the weekend, and Ashiok just single handedly won me the game because you lose all your Phoenix. There's no way. You yeah. Back to that. For sure. The one problem is it doesn't stop Crackling Drakes from being like 18 fours because it counts in exile. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Crackling Drakes seems really good in this format. So back to this nah, no, mono sorry. brown deck. True. Right? So you're saying you think mono blue is the base for it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you have Psy. What other artifacts do you have? Artifacts? Yeah. Uh, you have access you to have? Transmog Wand, Sorcerer's Spyglass, which is, I think, by far the most powerful artifact in the Chaos format. Wand. I'd play yeah. those. Uh, yeah. Immortal Sun. Uh, yeah. You don't want to play Immortal Sun. Oh, yeah, no, you're on the Planeswalkers. I'm just... symmetrical, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think it is a deck where, you know, if you're playing blue, you play four Field of Ruin. And then you can go yeah. get your islands. Yeah. You can also play a couple of Memorial of the Genius and play Crucible. Yeah, for sure. And just have a little engine right there, you know, being able to strip mine them or draw cards whenever you want. Mm -hmm. I treasure think map. Treasure map's great. I think that the, we'd actually have to find cuts. Like, there's actually a quite a decent amount. You know, are you playing Fountain of Renewal main? Can you afford that? Not main. No. No, you're just playing the board. They get to play four out of the board. Yeah. Right, honestly. And then you get, like, Antiquities War if you want. Yeah, that could be out of the board as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could play Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp. Big old 5-6 flyer for he's four. He's pretty decent right now, actually. Yeah. Yeah, big flyers with a big booty. Except for the fact that Teferi just bounces him, so he's pretty much garbage. Yeah, he is garbage, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to remove all. If only we had Padim still. Right? That yeah. would be dope. Because it'd be like, cool, that I'm playing all these artifacts, they all have expert. <laughs> I think Meteor Golem's a card that could oh, yeah. be really good right now. Oh, yeah. Meteor Golem plus Helm the Host is gross. Yeah, it is. That's pretty awesome. That's the engine we want for our Mono Brown deck. Like, if we're strictly, like, not even on blue, like, if we just want to be brown, right? Like, straight colorless? Yeah. Like, you could do it. You have so many colorless lands right now. Right. I'm saying you could just do, like, a whole ton if of you utility. Put a Helm the Host on a servo or on a construct, what happens? 
creates another construct. Does it go away? No, because its no. power and toughness are equal to plus one plus one of all the artifacts. And this seems like a really good crucible field of world deck. Field so it of makes ruin. a three three no matter what, because you've already got a helm out there. Yeah. yeah. And you could like if you want you could do it a bunch of different ways, right? So because you're doing so many colorless lands, you could almost if you wanted to be really heavy on land field of land destruction, you could just touch a little bit of red for crucible with memorial to war. Yep. Um if you think that what is it? Drawing a bunch of cards is going to be better. You just touch a few blue lands for Memorial to Genius. Yeah, if you're on the recursion plan. Honestly, you could just play five color lands. Yeah, if you totally just, if could. If you're just playing Field of Ruin, you can just play one of these here, fates. Here, and... you know what? Let's run with this thought. Can we play five color lands? Yeah, you, you, don't have, you don't have anything in your deck, though, that has a actual color in its mana cost, though. Yeah. Everything has to be colorless, except for your lands. All right, what do you think, Twitch chat? Five color lands mana base so that we can just do like a really really cool crucible package but all, all the spells are colorless all basics and like stuff no no, no you basics don't, you don't want to play dual lands no you're not going to play duels no, you have way better options you can play uh the scry land yeah the artifact scry land you can play blast zone you can play uh karn's bastion for sure there's a, there's a ton of good options out there uh but I, would just, I would just rather stick to one color Whatever one's the best, take a couple of memorials and a bunch of basics from my field. And honestly, it's probably red. Yeah, I think red's fine. I think Moral War's fine. I think Banefire's great, especially when you're hitting all Good these. board cards, yeah. yeah. Karn's Bastion is really good. Karn Bastion is one of my favorite cards. So are there set. artifacts that you could put counters on with Karn's Bastion? Treasure Map? Primal Amulet. Primal Amulet. Probably bad in bad. Deck. Yeah. Treasure Map. Transmog good. Wand. Transmog wand's pretty that's good. That's a big one. Yep, that's a pretty... What about Magistrate Scepter? That's the one I was about to mention. Ooh. So is there some way for us that's to... That's a really good way to abuse the mana that we're going to be producing with all these, like, artifacts, is because that's a very mana-intensive card. At that point, you just play Bob. Yeah, could you just play green and play the Tracker, or the Evolution Sage? Do we? So we're playing, like, Mono Green Proliferate. Yep. Yeah, and, okay. just, and but you're probably really heavy on the artifact package because you're trying to find Scepter and just go infinite. Yeah. And be able to win. Okay. I mean, you know, you basically... Sword Tooth seems great here. Yeah, are there other ways to put counters uh, in green or artifacts that's decent? Pollen Braid Druid. No, you need a repeatable put source. On, in mono green? Yeah, or artifacts. That puts counters on everything. Or is there any way to untap a permanent? Uh, what about Cura? Yeah. Cura, um, what about Cura to just untap that thing? You could and play... Uh, and then Tamio to get Cura back. You, know, you play two Tamios and one Cura and you have an infinite... So we're splashing just like a little bit of green and blue? Yeah. I mean, why not, right? It should be free. Yeah, it is free. You're just... You're basically trying to just flip Magistrate. So, I mean, the problem is, you're running the same thing to fair. It's not even just your creature dies removal. It's your, it's your sweet combo piece dies removal because you can just bounce it. Yeah, that's it's true. It's going to take you a lot longer early game to set up because he's just going to be able to bounce that stuff. If you're so not is this a Lazatep plating deck? That could be interesting. Is that, like, the answer to Teferi for us? Or we could also, like, this is a deck that could benefit from, like, Thorn Lieutenant. Yes. Yep. That's a really good Thorn Lieutenant deck. A lot of the people that I've been seeing have been playing... People um, are sleeping on Living Twister. That's one of your favorite yeah, cards. It is one of my favorite cards. I was brewing with that today. It's hard. It's hard. There's not a lot of good options for Living Twister right now. Although, I will tell you, it doesn't So, really is this a deck for Living Twister instead of blue? It doesn't even need a good... You don't even need a good, um, like, deck for Living Twister because it's so big. It shuts sure. down all the aggro plans. And it's never a dead card against other decks because you can just ping anything late game. It's a great top deck. You know, when you guys are both Hellbent. Yeah. And, and some in your race in, and you get him, he's awesome, you know? Could easily kill people in a couple of turns. I think that, you know, one of the biggest concerns right now is everybody has stretched their mana base so thin. Whoever figures out a good field of ruin, you know, I was playing Armia today and we're talking janky decks and diamond, but this guy was on a straight green red land destruction. He had like yeah. the four drop stone rain that let him scry, um, just going right after myself. Field of ruin, all that stuff. And it was, it's oppressive, even when you don't like have. That type of deck seems really good All in a meta pieces. where everyone's trying to be do big mana stuff. Right. You right. know, you probably and like Fold to Rhino Red. Nobody's playing right. Fire Spells anymore. 
Spell pierce. That's about it. I mean, you could do also fine against mono red. Like you have access to fiery cannonade, which is really good against them. Yeah. Um, and, and you play just like you could just play enough removal. He was playing plain white celebration. Seems really good in that deck. He played that. He played the statue. Okay. So even if you God Pharaoh able, statue. Yeah. Yep. And he played Carney T. Carney T. Big man energy. I was just gonna say, what if you played mono blue because you get access to search that way, but you only play artifacts. Well, you could just play like no you, more creatures. Yeah, you play not. You could play the planeswalkers too. You just play planeswalkers and artifacts, because then you can get them all off of search. That's a thought. That's a shout. Because then every single time you hit search, as long as it's not four lands, you always hit. Yeah. That's interesting. Tezzeret then, seems really good but too. Then, and then because you're playing, um, Karn, like you can play like artifact creatures on your board. So sure. And then that, um, right, because then you're never gonna hit him off search. Right, and you're always. Gonna I, be like able to hit him. I like so that. So we're we're missing the big Tez too here, the six drop, the one that just came out. That guy is really good. So I think we're gonna want to splash a little bit of black too. I think at this point we've talked about splashing every single color. Well, yeah, except right. for white. <laughs> white's terrible. Yeah, well, no, white's really good, but it's just terrible with artifacts. Yes. <laughs> Meteor Golem. <laughs> one of my favorite cards. It is. Meteor yeah. Golem, love it. Remember when I was playing Esper Meteor Golem? That's a card I want to try again. I gotta make it like, work. I think you can just play mono blue. I don't even think you have to splash another color on it, honestly. That Tezzer is so good. The six drop. Like, you can play the five He ends the game in two it. turns. You don't need to play any Tezzerets. You play yeah. both. I mean, you could play the five mana one. Tezzeret, uh, what's it called? You play both in some number. Because the splash is free. Hell, you could play Guild Globes in this deck if you really just want to uh, facilitate it. a quick little black splash for that big Tezzeret. There's this one. That's the bad one. I'm look, not looking for that one. This one. That one's good. You play both. Five mm -hmm. mana, Tezzeret, Artifice Master, and then whatever the new one's name is. Yeah, so you, if you, you can just zero and start drawing to two cards a turn. Yep. And they can Thopters. This part. Yeah, you just don't get anything. You just, yeah. yeah. You win. Yeah. No, I, I and I think. What are you doing, Dan? Standard. Tesserator, do that. No, I'm just looking up standard artifacts. Okay, for gatherer. No. I just want. I just want to no. see what artifacts are in standard. Go. Wait, why is it not showing me the? Go to Scryfall. It's so, way superior to. Gatherer. Is it the tier one site? It is absolutely. All right, it's, shout out Scryfall. Scryfall, <laughs> and they always do a number crunch for every new set. Okay. And whenever there's like foreign cards that are spoiled, they take their best guess, but they're always something really goofy. Okay. So how can I search for? Sorted by. Yeah, I have no idea. Did you type in artifact? No. Oh, just give me standard. There, you know it. You're good. Stop, stop, stop. Go oh. down. Type. No, go up. Type line. Click, click the type line thing. Yep. There you go. Artifact. Boom. Scroll down. Formats. Formats standard. There you Scroll go. Scroll down. Hit search. And then at the Do very you guys think Mox Amber is going to find a home in a format? Mox Amber is already seeing play in standard, name, itty bitty. Top sorted by name. It, it's uh. Click that. Click the, CMC. There's a lot of Planeswalker decks Everything that are getting it turned down. on with uh, Fibble Flip. How do you say it, Dan? Fibble Flip. Fibble Flip. It's it's smash your keyboard and that's how you get it. So do we want to facilitate Mox Amber in our deck here? Wait, not at all. No. no. <laughs> you'd only be able to. Do nothing with it. It doesn't create colorless. Hey, you know what? Here's a shout. So we could play Navigator's Compasses instead in the main deck instead of playing Fowler, Houghton, what's that Fowler card? Fowler Renewal. Renewal out of the board because that'll allow you to facilitate a splash real easy. And you get your land drops. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, a lot of these are pretty garbo. Yep. That's why I'm looking uh, at I would play Amulet of Safekeeper in the board. You can grab it. Sweet. You can grab it from Karn and stop like... Um, Decks, yeah. You're playing Azor's Gateway for <laughs> sure. Just to filter out your bad draws. Yep. It's one of the best cards. Artifacts in standard, oh, at least. Perfect. Dowsing Dagger flips into a, a, a Plume Veil. Or not Plume Veil. What's that card called? Lotus Veil. Yeah. Plume Veil. Stupid. Millstone. Let's do it. <laughs> that and Kiora, right? I want to put cure and everything. You're in mono blue. Oh. You play uh, silent submersible. You. Oh. 
I love compass on the board. Like compass, you, know, you can just grab it. And maze of Ifs, right? Yeah, why, why not? Or not Maze of Ifs. Yeah, it's Maze of Ifs. No, it is Maze of Ifs. Maze of, it. of course, we're going to play the treasure map in the spyglass. You could play one like an arcane encyclopedia, just draw some cards. Crucible yeah. is in some versions. Yeah, for sure. Through Magic Compass. Chaos Wand is a shout. I would play that. Yeah. Play Probably in the sideboard, but who cares? Magistrate Scepter, stop going so fast, jerk. What about the Relic? Which one? Arazka Relic. Instead I'm a big of... fan of that card. Instead of the Power Stone? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I could get behind I mean, that. Especially with Navigator's Compass, you probably could play that instead of Navigator's Compass. Yeah, but you make so much mana with Power Stone Shard, man. That is true. You make a ton of mana. What do you? All right, Twitch chat, what do you think? A Razka Relic? Or uh, what's the other one called? Power Stone Shard. I think if you're in an aggro meta, you want the Relic. Yeah. Probably. <clears throat> Transmog Wand. For sure. Card's great. You could play... The card that I keep looking at, Bryant, is uh, Amaranthine Wall, just as, like, a speed bump. Because it, it gets... It's really big, and it gets indestructible. Just play this guy. And just play a bunch of different things. Is Golden there... Guardian? Is he a card? No, no he's not. No, he's not. Icy Manipulator? That's a card. That's that a, card. a card. That's a card I, I, I want to be playing in my Field of Ruin, God for Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, do them dirty. I mean, you could probably play some, you know, green red in there. It doesn't have to be an artifact based deck. Erasca is decent. Okay, okay. Do we play Traxos? Is just like a finisher? No. Weatherlight. No, you don't play Weatherlight. No, you're not crude enough. You That's could play true. Gilded Lotus. You could, you could play. Sahiri. You could play Traxos, honestly, because you're just gonna be playing artifacts. That's what I'm saying. The Planeswalkers untap him, too. Like, all the cards in the deck untap him. Yeah. Everything untaps Traxos. You can play, like, two. The thing is... You just play him as a one-up out of your board. Yeah. True, because you, you can go grab him with card. Yeah. Cards. yeah. yeah. All right, there you go, there you go. You right. Misha Self-Replicator, he's one you could find out of your board. If you're playing with the Power Stone shards. Yeah. You need the mana. Well, he only I costs mean, one to make another one. It, is there anything really big that's that you could play that... Ran to core gateway would make it worth it? Not really. No. Okay. Although I wouldn't even mind using that to just go find cards. <laughs> what? You don't find stuff. You don't find stuff. You put something on the battlefield. Oh. Not very okay. good. No. It, it has to be, but it has to be a uh, historic permanent. I wish um, omniscience was historic. Just play bolus in this deck. Well, I mean, it'd be great if omniscience, because you'd be like omniscience, drop my hand. <laughs> Don't we have a big blue enchantment right now? Omniscience. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Nothing legendary? No. No. You can play Bolus of Citadel. Twitch chat, is there anything you're thinking of? Bolus of Citadel? It's legendary. Uh, no. It's only good if you can make enough artifact or make enough uh, like tokens to make yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you can play Guild of Lotus. God Pharaoh statue, that one's really good. What a great yeah. card and what terrible art. What happened there? What, no, oh. God for a I love the art for that card. Really? Yeah. Look like Meteor Golem. Definitely miss a Meteor Golem. Oh, that's some good art. That's yeah. Some art right there. Big fan of that card. And the art. Iron Man. Parhelion 2. That's all the artifacts. So look at blue. Everything good is about to pop up. All the good cards. Well, I'm looking for things that like mention artifacts, though. You mm. could search that. Don't yeah. don't dig through all this stuff. There's way too many blue cards. How many are there? 250. Yeah. Like Just search it. Just go up to text up top. Artifact. Uh, can I go like enter? Nope. You don't even need to. There won't be that many. Hold on. I wanted to go artifact. Or historic. And or historic. Okay. How do I do? Just, put, just type in historic. Okay. Blue and standard. Uh, no. You're gonna have to get rid of one of those keywords. I think it's yeah. it's getting confused. 
I don't know. I think there's way too many directions to take this deck. I do think that if you talked about your core package, you'd want Karn. Both Karns. Ugin. Um, probably some number of treasure map. And there's Four treasure maps. And at that point, and... You play one with Machine. There's only yeah. one of, because you just be yeah, like... That's 16 put, already. Put, like, uh, one with Machine is, like, put a, uh, like, seven mana... Like, put a Meteor Golem out, cast that, draw seven cards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Or even if you, like, play Karn, you pay four to draw four cards. I think I'd, r I'd just rather play Big Tezzeret, or yeah. Little Tezzeret. Five drops. Th Same that'll way. draw a ton of cards for you. Without it's a recurring source of card advantage. It's not just one spell. And it costs like the same. Money. There's my boy Zahid. I want to play him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. No, I know. He's a good card, but he's bad right now. Spell swindle. That's a bad card, and it's bad right now. I know. Yeah, it is. I just forgot it was a card. <laughs> I've gotten some people with uh, spell swindle. Don't oh, get me yeah. wrong. Just not good right now because it's free. Yeah. Hey guys, we've been going on here for a pretty long time. I didn't realize.